Hello and welcome back. ZBrush has released, um, not ZBrush, Pixel Logic is the company that released ZBrush. Um, ZBrush uh, is a program, if you don't know. ZBrush is a program that does texturing. It can do texturing, but it mostly does detail and objects and stuff like that for 3D um, animation or 3D production. Um, using objects and high level of detail with a lots and lots of uh, polygons. It's a pretty good program. It's a program that you can't just pick up and learn right away. You have to kind of do a little bit of studying and learn specifically how ZBrush works cuz it's not like a not like working a Photoshop or anything like that. It's not like even working Maya or 3D Studio Max. So uh but I would highly recommend Anyone who's doing any sort of 3D production or 3D work or just hobbyist to learn ZBrush if you can. Now, ZBrush is, um, you know, for someone on a pretty tight budget, I don't think it's uh, really that inexpensive. Uh, you know, people don't want to spend too much money on too many things these days, especially if they're hobbyists. And especially if they're not making money with it right now. Um, when I'm doing a production, though, I find that... It's easier for me to go from ZBrush to Photoshop to Maya because of ZBrush, uh, because of Pixel Logic's insistence on creating software that integrates with all sorts of other programs. They have a, a plugin for ZBrush called Gozi, um, and it will automatically transfer your stuff between Maya and uh, ZBrush and even Photoshop. So it kind of merges all those three programs, those three major programs together to make things a lot easier. Um, so Pixel Logic is really interested in like um, getting all these programs to work with its own program to make things a lot easier. But I don't think they're really interested in changing ZBrush. So this is why I think Pixel Logic came out with this, uh, this free download, Sculptress. And right now what I'm doing is I'm going to demonstrate how to use Sculptress with the Cintiq 21 UX that I have right here. Now there's a new Cintiq 21, right, there's a new Cintiq 21 UX. It's a second uh, um, generation that has come out. Basically, you're going to get more feel. You're going to get more, um, the, the system understands more of the angle of the, the pin. Um, but... Basically, the, the look is a little bit different. I think the look is better. But if, I think if you can get your hands on one of these, these Wacom uh, Cintiq 21 UX, the first first generation, uh, it'll be worth it because uh, the new generation has come out, which I think is going to make these a bit cheaper. And if you're saving a couple of hundred bucks uh, just because the tilt may be a little bit different or, you know, the, the resolution is a bit better, from what I understand. I'll be soon getting one of those, and I'm going to be reviewing one of those. But for right now, I would say that you can do everything that you need to do from the first generation. And if you can save some money, if there's, if it's still out there, go ahead and get the first um, 21 UX first generation to save a bit of money and still do exactly the same thing as you as you would have done before. So right now, what I'm reviewing is the Sculptress um Sculptress free download from Pixelogic.com. Go to Pixelogic.com and look up Sculptress or go to Google and search for Sculptress. That's the easiest way. Everybody goes to Google anyway. So go to Google and look up Sculptress. So, okay, so what I have here is one of the most exciting 3D objects on the planet. I know you're thinking, wow, that guy created that sphere and I've never seen anything like it. Yeah, Pixar, you know, I'm uh I'm taken right now, so I can't come to your studios and, you know, recreate this and uh make my whole version of uh Avatar with three D balls and squares. The resolution is just too great for your systems to to take. But uh I'm just gonna show you guys how to use the sculptures right now. So Sculptress is pretty amazing, and I tell you why, because this thing, everything that you see in front of you is all that you need. It's like a a really dumbed-down version of 
I want to say ZBrush, but ZBrush has so many things to it. So a uh, really, really, really dumbed down version of ZBrush. Um, all of your tools are right over here. Everything that you need, right? And then you have your your um, brush size, your strength. If I click here, I'm gonna I can uh, add in new textures or anything like that. Uh, materials, I get all these materials here. So let's say I click that material. That's the material that just dropped on there, as you can see. I can click any other material. That's pretty cool. If I want to, uh, with this Cintiq, if I want to rotate this thing, I can just click anywhere here on the outside and start rotating. Uh, oh, this one looks cool. These are pretty nice. Pretty nice, actually. So, first what I do is I, I go over here and I can choose these to manipulate the object. And everything has shortcut keys on it. It shows you the shortcut keys. It shows you everything. You can uh, import, um, start a new sphere, import objects, export objects, so you can take them into Maya. And by the way, uh, as I was speaking before about Pixel Logics and you know the insistence on making everything kind of uh, seamless, they have a Go Z button button right here. You click that Go Z button. Go to PixelLogic.com. Download Go Z for free if you're using Photoshop, if you're using um, ZBrush, if you're using Maya, 3D Studio Max. It's unbelievable. It makes things so much easier. I was around during that time where you had to <laughs> you had to do everything manually, export this, do that. You didn't even know if it was going to work until you got into Maya, and you wasn't sure if the settings were right. Now it's just a click of a button. You know, before we had to have a rotary phone, we had to have robots. I mean, it was just insane. But now, click at a button. It's the future, folks. It's the future. You are in the future. <laughs> so, ZBrush button, the greatest thing on the planet, I think, that Pixelogic has come up with. And by the way, it's getting even easier. Um, let's see. So, I can actually paint this, too. So I, I, I uh, press the paint button. It says um, press OK to build a mapping. Now, what this is doing, it's going to build a texture map for me, you know, instead of me doing it manually. I go ahead and do that, and it's fixing all the polygons and all these other things. And <clears throat> once that's done, click OK. Now I have myself this uh, texture map, OK? Um I can change the size, and as you can see here, a few of the options are a little bit different, only because I have this texture map here. And if you notice here, a few of my options over here have changed, right? So I have the paint bump right here, so I can, I can paint bump maps on here. I have... I have um, different colors, so let's say if I choose this, I can choose the different colors that I want. I mean, it's pretty amazing. I can go to my options here and change a lot of different things about my object, export, uh, exporting of the object. So this is uh, this program all by itself had already taken some of the interface away from so that I can concentrate on this map. If I want the uh, the if I want the advanced tools back, I can click this, and then I have all my advanced tools and stuff like right here. I can go ahead and export that by clicking this button right here, and I can go ahead. And, I can export it as an OBG file. I mean, it is pretty amazing what this uh, program can do. By the way, remember it's free. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new scene. It says, it's just telling me that the changes will be lost. That's fine. Tools are back. So I can use my, my crease tool, and I can start making creases into this thing, as you can see. Look at that. That's pretty cool. Rotate. Now, this rotate is a little bit different because it's not, I'm not rotating the object. If I wanted to rotate the object, I can click and start rotating it like this. You see, this this rotate is pretty cool because this rotate is rotating the surface 
look at that. I'm rotating the surface, the texture, and the actual not 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 just the texture, the the actual object itself. I'm rotating. You see. So if I were to put more on there, let's say if I put I I take this one right here, and I'm gonna make a the bump. I'm gonna make a bump. Maybe this is a some sort of creature's head or something like that. How come creatures always have to have these large lumps and stuff? Now, the thing about uh, sculptress you want to always keep in mind is that they, there's this um, there's this symmetrical line here. Uh, you can actually turn that off. I like it there. Uh, so I'm going to use my flat tool here. It's always good to just go through these things. Now, flat tool is going to flatten... Let's say, let's say I, I use this, this inflate tool, right? I'm just going to inflate this part. Dude, you got a huge lump on your head. Did you notice that? Did you notice that huge lump on your head? And then I'm going to use the pinch. So you see how it starts to even things out. Now, if I use the flatten on that, it's not going to flatten the whole thing down. It's not going to re um, resample the surface. It's just going to flatten the tip. See, so it's flattening the tip. All these tools are pretty much straightforward. You know, the pinch. It's obvious. So I just start pinching. Just like with your regular hands. You're, you're actually sculpting with your regular hands. If you haven't used ZBrush, you can still use this program. As a matter of fact, if you've used ZBrush, you would, you would respect this program even more. Right here I have the grab. I can grab that surface. See, I'm moving it around. Just grabbing it with my hands, kind of. See that? From here, I can smooth things out. Maybe I don't want it so sticky looking, so pointy looking. I can look at my wireframe. Now, if you look at this wireframe, if I were to bring this thing into Maya and try to sculpt this thing like this into Maya, I would have some huge trouble for this. And if you notice here, I'm getting like the point, the, the, real, the tip of the brush, and then there's the outer part that actually kind of fades off. I can change all of that. I can make the tip kind of light. I can make it very strong there, and I can expand that, see? So that I can get really good detail here. If I really wanted to do that. And if you notice, when I start doing this, really, I am doing heavy, heavy detail here, which means if you look at the wireframe, it automatically increases the amount of polygons or triangles that you're using. So you, you kind of have to be careful on that part because it's using as much as it needs to do the work. Then you can go ahead and paint it. I already showed you that. And basically, everything is right here. I take this. I go ahead and export it. I can go through Gozi. It'll automatically open up the program that I chose for Gozi. Open up Maya. And I can go ahead and uh, save this. I'll save it as Tester Sphere. Save it. Already exists. Yes, I want to replace it. And boom, it's done. All I got to do now is go into Maya, open it up, and it'll come out exactly the same. It'll come out with the material. It'll come out with everything. So there you go. So there you have it. Using the Cintiq 21 UX and uh, Pixel Logic Sculptress, you can pretty much let your imagination fly uh, and have fun with it. I mean, I could sit here all day just messing around, but actually I got a lot of work to do. So hopefully this helps you out. And if you have any questions, um, go ahead and go to YouTube and leave some comments, please. And like this on Facebook and all of that sort of jazz. Uh, you can also email me at uh, malik at virtualisle.com or masx9000 at gmail.com. And tell me what kind of tutorials you want. 
if you want it on cameras, if you want it on, you know, pads, 3D, web applications or web programming, programming itself, whatever you need, I got it. So go ahead and uh, have fun with the Cintiq, and uh, if you get that, then I would highly recommend getting it. And if you don't, just use any regular Wacom tablet. I highly recommend all Wacom tablets. They're awesome. And also, uh, go to Pixelogic. Go ahead and buy ZBrush if you can. Learn ZBrush. And also, go ahead and um, do free download for Windows, and I think they have for Mac, the, the Sculptress Alpha 6. Alright, thanks for watching. See you guys soon.